What's up, Reject Nation? I'm Greg Alba. I'm John Humphrey. We are gonna watch the trailer for Midway, Roland Emmerich's newest film. I think there was a trailer that came out a while ago, but unfortunately did not catch that one, so I figured it's best to catch this one. And also tell you guys, I'm going off Fandom Entertainment Screen Junkies News in just a little bit, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anywho, let's hop right into this, shall we? Cool. CGI. Who's this kid? You didn't think he could cut it? That's I figured it was just the usual jitters. I'll take him under my wing. He was wanting to be scared. Oh. Oh. Uh. Pearl Harbor is the greatest intelligence failure in American history. This can never happen again. And a lot of other movies. Yeah. I'm gonna make it right. Patriots. Hey, some of the boys still want to fight. Nick Jonas. <laughs> the Japanese are playing something bigger. So what's the target? We believe it's Midway. Washington disagrees. Washington is wrong. Ooh. Washington is wrong. This is timely. The Japanese on the West Coast. Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Hmm. Oh, Burn. We got the order to launch. Aaron Eckhart. We need to throw a punch. So they know what it feels like to be hit. Did that really happen? <laughs> oh, I thought that was Darren Chris. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh. I wonder how, how real veterans feel about a trailer like this. I don't know. Probably sitting there cheering it on. Uh, Going, hell yeah! That's, right. that's exactly how it felt. <laughs> felt like a cool action movie when I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With some historical context just to remind us all. I like Roland Emmerich's movies for the most part. <laughs> I'm gonna acknowledge that a lot of them aren't <laughs> exactly great, great film. <laughs> but nine times out of ten, I'm usually having fun when I'm watching it. Even mm -hmm. if it's a movie like 2012 or Day After, any one of his many disaster movies. Mm -hmm. I even prefer White House Down over Olympus Has Fallen. So I am by no stretch a Roland Emmerich hater, even though I can acknowledge that he is not one of the most credible artistic filmmakers out there. But he usually has an amount of good cheesy heart, mm -hmm. some epic scale action sequences, a good ensemble of character actors, and that's what he's doing here just with a true story. <laughs> you know, yeah. Everything yeah. we've seen him do with his big disaster movies is all right here on display. I feel like I should be feeling something along the lines of what that 19 no, trailer made me feel, something that felt a little bit more harrowing and despairing. No feelings that war movies ought to give you. And then here I instead was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, look at all that CGI I had action going on. Yeah. Cool, you know? It's a lot to uh, demand for a film to do this all practical, but I don't know how much of this is practical, and then they CGI'd over it to fine tune some stuff, but it looks like uh, most of it is CGI. I mean, screen. a lot of the action looks CGI or green screen or enhanced, or yeah. I mean, you have so many of these incredible destruction shots of like planes flipping over and crashing into battleships and stuff, so I would expect, I guess, that only like the establishing shots and the quieter moments on these uh, aircraft carriers or right. whatever are going to be 
practical. I mean, this to me looks like Pearl Harbor knowing better what kind of movie it truly wants to be. <laughs> true, true. Um, without any allusion to much of a love story other than that one scene. It almost makes this look like there's one scene <laughs> where there's gonna be a character moment between Ed Screen and his lady companion. I think that was Mandy Moore. Oh, was that Mandy Moore? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's cool. Famously starring in 47 Meters Down. Oh yeah, her and Nick Jonas, man, finally together on screen. I hope they do a song for the end credits. You know, I always laugh when I see Nick Jonas appear in something, but then whenever I watch him in something, he's pretty good. <laughs> well, and this is the kind of movie where that seems to be appropriate, you know, just because Well, like, Harry Styles was in Dunkirk, exactly, exactly. so throw Nick Jonas in here, <laughs> and then you got Michael Bay doing Pearl Harbor, who's next in line to do a Pearl Harbor-esque kind of film, other than Roland Emmerich. Yeah, and maybe this one <laughs> will be a, me. a more solid all-around experience, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I, I think that you could have done something with this subject matter that could have been a little bit more impactful. I know I'm well, talking yeah. as if I've seen the movie already, <laughs> just weighing in what this, Lionsgate, Lionsgate and Sony, I think. Mm -hmm. When I watch one of their trailers, even if I'm like optimistic going, I hope it's not like that, it usually is what it is <laughs> when, yeah. I, when I watch the movie. I mean, I expect and, this to have some broad strokes about, you know, its yeah. themes and heroism and the triumph of the human spirit the thing and whatnot. Is, but... I could get on board with cheese. I could get, sure. even, even in a war movie, I can get on board with cheesiness. I can get on board with over exuberant amounts of false art <laughs> that I'm the filmmakers putting there. Yeah. Uh, I just wish that, you know, when you got these amount of actors, Ed Screen, Patrick. Was it Wilson? Oh Patrick God. Wilson. Yeah, Patrick Wilson. Yeah. Patrick Damn. Wilson, Luke Evans, Luke Woody Evans. Harrelson. Yeah, you got these this great ensemble of yeah. awesome actors in here, mm -hmm. and I kind of feel like they're just names in a voiceover they're, cast for an animated movie. Oh, yeah, just they're, like, they're I wanna, showing up to give me, credibility. Let me see the actors, you know? <laughs> they're showing up to bring their clout to their different military posts and whatnot, too. Right. I feel like that's kind of... I guess you could call that stunt casting because it's like, okay, you know, these guys, you know, Woody Harrelson or Aaron Eckhart, like those guys who are a little bit older now, but you know, they've got that yeah. presence, you know, they're perfect to play these military mind types. Yeah, eh, it just looks like another role in Emmerich It does, it looks exactly like I, a role I just, in I just hope it has some of that unintentional humor that Roland Emmerich constantly manages to oh. ring out of his films. Oh yeah, this is- And if it's in a war movie, the that perfect would be perfect. setting for that. I would love that I yeah. find it funny that line that Patrick Wilson says about Washington is wrong. Oh, yeah. I think you could have made this movie 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. But I imagine that with that line now, with the current political climate the U.S. is in, people might totally read into that in a completely different kind of context for this part of the advertising. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that. I mean, to me, coming from this kind of movie, coming from this kind of film, Maker, I sort of view that line of dialogue as a direct, I don't know, knock at the bureaucratic. I feel like these kinds of movies, and especially Michael Bay's movies, always portray the non-soldier diplomat guys as bumbling idiots or people who are, yeah. you know, not with the program, and it's always the soldier types, the strong, you know, loner types that are really getting it done, man. So that's kind of what I took from that, and less of a sort of like, oh, Washington is truly messed up and more just like, ah, oh, these dudes puttering around, they don't know what it's like out here in the shit. Have you forgotten how much Roland Emmerich seems to not like the White House? Oh, yeah. He blew it up in Independence Day. Yeah. It gets totally assaulted all over White House town. <laughs> and oh, yeah. He doesn't like the White House. No. So I feel like it's kind of weird for him to make. <laughs> just joking, guys. I don't know anything <laughs> about Roland Emmerich's political views. I'm just going off his past works, you know? Yeah. Statue of Liberty is constantly destroyed, but that's a lot of disaster movies. It's oh, just, yeah. He's done that's half a... of the disaster movies, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I just assume he doesn't like America. He's just trying to <laughs> he's talk. constantly him. destroying the world, but it's primarily America <laughs> that he's focusing on destroying. You know, he's just trying to top himself each and every time. He is his own competition now, you know, especially now that Michael Bay is... I don't know what's going on with him. He's trying to take the reins back of Transformers. <laughs> Well, guys, what do you think of the movie Midway? Are you excited for it? You know, th these, I just really think after Dunkirk, they should have done a little more practical. 
Well, yeah. Dunk, especially since there's yeah. so much aerial fighting in Dunkirk in the most realistic way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know they're doing like crazy elaborate stuff where I'm like, I don't think that's how it went down. Yeah. <laughs> but doing... I just wish it, it was a little bit more practical looking at least. You yeah, know? it's this weirdly picturesque but very... It looks like Sky Captain in the world of tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's got that old time imagery and it, it is picturesque in its own way but it feels very juiced up and effects heavy. It feels very glossy in a way that doesn't feel real. <laughs> yeah. You know? So for a war movie, that's a little bit of an odd flavor, but, I mean, this is going to be like a mass appeal PG-13 war movie, I would imagine, mm. so. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. You can check us out on Patreon, where we do weekly Q&As, TV show reactions, stream along. Some of those shows have reaction highlights included. He does music video coverage weekly. And I'd like to give a Patreon of the Day shout-out to a man named Duck Midi. Duck me D, pledge for a shout out. And as you guys know, I like to give very personal shout outs after getting to know said patron inject. Duck hasn't gotten back to me. And I noticed this is the best way to get a hold of someone who hasn't messaged you in a while so you can give them a proper shout out. Duck me D, more like duck the G. It's usually followed with some kind of excuse of, I don't get my messages, I'm busy, I have a job. I have a job, which is valid, even though I'm totally mocking you, it's valid. <laughs> it's completely valid. But usually an insult will uh, get your attention, and the insult is all in a form of satire. I have to acknowledge that because some shit went down recently. <laughs> <laughs> So suck a duck. Suck a duck. Suck a duck, Mindy. Suck me duck. <laughs> suck me duck. Suck me duck. And hopefully you now know that I've been waiting to hear back from you. Yes. And I could get to know who you really are. Send us some duck pics.